This is the first video where I have three piercings in one ear and two in the other. Usually it's just one and two. I got this done two days ago. So it's still a bit sore, but it's pretty. Hello everybody, welcome to Mocking Gary on a Free. It's Sunday, which means a new video. Someone asked me if I could do a video on things that just didn't really make sense on the next step. You know, like the things that left everybody going, what? Or they were just confused or they didn't have proper endings and it's just a bit like, just the things that didn't make sense in the next step. The next step is supposed to be a reality style drama and by reality style I mean the style that it was in season one. So season one compared to say season six had a lot more kind of handheld camera actions. There was like times where the camera was a bit shaky as it moved to like someone else that was happening in the scene and it zoomed in and out of focus and it just seemed like a camera crew had gone into the studio kind of like dance mums that kind of style how when something dramatic would happen the camera people would be like whoa we need to we need to capture this especially for the talking heads it was like you could see the the monitor behind like in front of them that they were talking into and things like that but as the seasons went on there was more editing in them there was more fancy tricks and cutaways and like effects which didn't make it a reality style drama anymore it just basically turned into a drama so yeah i kind of wish they'd like remembered what the point of the next step was and the actual style it's meant to be in but things progress i suppose and if they wanted to have a change of direction then they wanted to have a change of direction so i have got six one two three I've got five. I've got five things that to me stood out as not making sense on the next step or just not having much relevance to the actual point of the next step and the fact that it's meant to be realistic. There's probably more but I literally made this list this morning on my phone while I was in bed and I was like yeah I'll talk about them. So the first thing I don't think made much sense on the next step because it's meant to be a reality show, reality style drama, is Margie. Now Margie was a character that was in the next step from season one to season three. She was in baby ballet, she was you know she had personality about her, she was very independent, very mature for her age. Her kind of role in the show was just to kind of be seen as who Chloe was afraid of because Chloe really didn't like children in the earlier seasons so she had this thing with Chloe where she was always quite like just sneaking up on her and things like that and she was also Emily's favourite baby ballet child so she was very much real because everyone could see her like everyone interacted with her she was she was present like she wasn't a part of someone's imagination when chloe was conflicted about going to the ballet company margie gave her a lot of advice that chloe listened to and then when chloe made her decision they had kind of a dance together in studio a which was really cute and i really liked it it was very wholesome and it was just nice to see Chloe develop because, you know, season one she really hated children and season three she obviously doesn't mind them so much. But then this happened. And then she disappears and it makes me wonder if she was ever really there. Why? I mean, I, I can't even really give any suggestions as to what that means other than, I don't know, Chloe feeling satisfied that Margie has helped her and been a guardian angel to her. But the next step's meant to be a reality show. In what reality does that happen? Like if that's ever happened to you and someone has turned into glitter and disapparated in front of you, then please let me know. I was just a bit like, what, what's happening here, please? And that for me is the start of when the next step started to turn a lot more into a drama than a reality style drama. I've seen a lot of theories on what was actually happening in that scene. I saw someone say that Margie never existed and she was just a, a piece of Chloe's imagination, but people spoke to Margie, like Emily spoke to her, she was in the class with the rest of the, the little girls and the e-girls. Like she, she was there miss kate spoke to her as well so she's not just non-existent oh i i don't know because after she disapparated like she wasn't seen again so i don't know if that if she was just an alien or a fairy or i, I don't know I, I honestly don't know you can leave your suggestions down below in the comments of what maybe happened there but 
The only thing I think happened was the writers got a bit too carried away. Maybe they drank a bit too much or they, they were just thinking like they were writing for another show. I, I don't know, but if it was me and I had been a writer in season three, that would have not happened. The next thing I want to talk about is Noah's injury in season four because it was only in season four. My back has been sore all week and it's not getting any better. One, two, full out, Noah. He had something on his spine and if it popped, then it would have been like detrimental to his health. He maybe wouldn't have danced again, maybe even walked again. Um, and he obviously got it sorted out at the hospital, but it meant he couldn't dance in the regionals qualifiers, which is understandable, but then he danced at regionals, which is only maybe a couple months at most after it. I'm pretty sure if you get surgery on your spine, you wouldn't be dancing two months after. Actually, you might be dancing, but maybe not doing backflips and just dancing full out and doing lifts like it was just completely unrealistic Noah was up about and jumping around after his surgery so either he's indestructible and has immensely good recovery like system in his body N no he doesn't it was just it was just an error like they shouldn't have done it it was unrealistic and I think maybe if they'd done it at the beginning of the season or at the end of season three and then Noah danced in season four regionals it might have made sense, but it just didn't. What would have been good instead is if Noah, after his surgery, obviously he was told he can't dance, so he wouldn't be able to dance at regionals, but he'd be okay for season five. Um, and then Cassie, as the alternate, would have been able to perform. Amanda would have been able to have perform when Michelle came back from the hospital. Everything would have been fine, literally, and Noah would have had enough time to recover for season five, where he could dance properly again. To follow up that, Rochelle's injury. Rochelle's injury in season five was pretty realistic. You know, it was a realistic injury for a dancer. It wasn't as far-fetched as Noah needing full-on surgery on his back. Um, it was something that is a repetitive strain injury and something that affects a lot of dancers because she has snapping hip syndrome, but it was only in a few episodes of season five. Let's do a bit of researching. Snapping hip syndrome is also known as coxus saltans and is a condition that is characterised by a snapping sensation or and or an audible snap or click noise in the hip when it's in motion. Hence, you know, when Michelle was doing her illusion, she heard it snap and she fell on the floor and she was like, better not let Lola find out about that. For most people, this condition is simply an annoyance. However, it may result in both pain and weakness interfering with the patient's functional mobility. So for Rochelle, it was annoying to her because she felt, well, she didn't feel fine, but she just wanted to dance and her hip was kind of pulling her back a bit. Um, and it was hurting her because she couldn't walk in a few scenes. She was really struggling. The pain decreases with rest and diminished activity. So that's why Lola was always saying to Rochelle, you need to rest, you shouldn't be doing the regionals qualifier video, like it's not going to matter, it'd be better if you just wait and till you're fully healed for regional. As long as snapping hip does not give any pain, the condition does not require treatment. But Rochelle's snapping hip syndrome did cause her pain. As soon as it hurts, you must stop any such action that tends to aggravate the pain. You have to provide rest to the hip joint. See, so Rochelle should have stopped. That's why she ended up in the hospital at season five. I knew I was in trouble with my hip. My parents took me to the hospital and I've never been so scared. I thought my dance career was over. It doesn't say anything about like whether it's a permanent thing or whether it fades over time, but you know, I just don't think Rochelle's injury lasted long enough. Researching over. I feel like especially because it was at the very end of season five, the first few episodes of season six where she wasn't there, she should have come back and said something at least about her injury because she just didn't turn up. Like, she didn't tell Miss Angela, she didn't have a check-in with Emily and Michelle to just say how she was doing. It was literally like it didn't even exist. I've said before in a past video that when she's spraying her feet in, I think it's the first episode she comes back, she should have maybe been doing some physio exercises instead because it was just ridiculous that she had this injury that made her go to the hospital. The same as Noah and then they're back dancing absolutely fine. 
I'd love to say that it's just because they're Noah and Michelle, they're a power couple, they're possibly the best two dancers on A Troop. Realistically, that wouldn't happen. They'd still have issues that they'd need to work around and at least check in with the studio head. So, yeah two unrealistic things. The last two are also in season four, so yeah, season four wasn't a very realistic season. Um, so Riley being chosen as studio head for me was very unrealistic. Riley has absolutely no experience running a studio or even being dance captain. She's never even led a troupe, but Miss Kate thought she'd be the perfect person to be studio head purely because she enjoys the next step and has been there a long time. Like, that's not how things work. I can't run the studio. Can I? Realistically, I think, like, to make someone else studio head, you'd have to sign so many papers and sort out their wages, sort out taxes. Like, it wouldn't just be as simple as, you can be studio head now because you love the next step. Thank you, Miss Kate. I would like to be studio head. When you work out the ages, if Noah is 18 in season 6, he's probably 16 in season 4. So Riley's too, Riley's going to be only 18, if that. An 18 year old cannot, well they can run a studio, but not Riley, who has no experience. I mean that's why they lost regionals, because she just didn't know what she was doing. But it was completely unrealistic that Miss Kate, who loves the next step and really cares about the management of it, would just give it to Riley. She'd really want to make sure it was in good hands. And the last thing I found really unrealistic about the next step season four was how often the characters were on a plane flying to the other side of the world. I think the first instance of this was when James, Eldon and West went to England for the bangers and mashups extravaganza hip hop competition, can't really remember the name, um, which was fine because they travelled and they stayed there. Um, but then James came back to Canada, which is also fine. I can't remember the timeline of things, but I know that Alfie flew to Switzerland and then back to Canada. I know Riley went to England and then back to Canada with James. James went from England to Canada to England to Canada, pretty sure, because he went back home to check Piper was okay. Then he had to go back for the competition. Then he went back home. Just, oh, and then Eldon and West had to go back home as well. So then they flew back to Canada. That's like, that's so much money. I'm going to find out how much it costs to fly from the UK to Canada because if it's literally as cheap as they're looking then I'm gonna go to Canada and I'll vlog it while I'm there. The cheapest return price was £246 which isn't bad um, but if you calculate it like James came back and forwards how many times? I'm pretty sure James doesn't have a job so unless Deborah's giving him all this money to like fly backwards and forwards from the UK to Toronto I'm very unconvinced that this is realistic. Also Riley. Riley works at the studio but she doesn't earn enough to be jetting off to Toronto. No, Toronto? To London and back. Like, I don't know. It, it was just totally unrealistic. I mean Alfie can afford it because he's the Prince of Switzerland, you know. So those are things that I found really unrealistic about the next step, even though the next step isn't real. It's meant to be a reality style drama. Hence, it shouldn't have so much editing and fake scenarios and unrealistic storylines so yeah if you can think of things that weren't very realistic to you then leave them down below in the comments also remember to like this video if you really enjoyed it and subscribe if you're not already because if this is popping up in your recommended and you've just sat through the whole thing i think it means that you like my channel and you like the video so you might as well make it a permanent thing thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next week with a new video bye